Well, I spent my first 11 years in a town named Heartland, a town 30 miles west of Milwaukee. It had about 2,000 people at the time. It, it was a good place to grow up. It was uh, friendly neighborhoods and a place that one could easily get around. Uh, and uh, so I have a lot of happy memories growing up there. I was the first one to be born, and I uh, tell people that I was an only child for 11 months, and I loved it. I really enjoyed all the attention. Uh, but then my sister came along, and then another brother, and a sister, and a sister, and so on, until there were 10 of us. In a certain sense, that's the first school where you learn how to live with other people. Uh, it would, as much as I enjoyed being an only child, I have to admit I learned a lot from having a lot of siblings around me all the time. You, you have to learn how to negotiate, how to work through conflicts. Uh, you have to learn how to uh, share. Uh, I really do think that whatever I learned about community had its foundation growing up in a large family. I painted this for my uncle Mark because this is what represents him when he was first ordained. First of all, I, I've been thinking and remembering back when he was born, and I was so much in awe of my first child, and uh, I remember offering him to God and s saying, God, do with him as you will. He's, he's my gift from you, but I give him back to you. And uh, I've been thinking of that lately because it certainly came true. Certainly, we wouldn't want to paint a picture of our family life that it was idyllic. We, we had all the struggles and conflicts and, and things that most any family would have had. But I have to say, as we've grown older, we've also grown closer. And now I've got this amazing support system that I know is always there. People that uh, will always love me, care about what I'm doing, care about what's happening in my life be there if I need them for anything. Hello there. Hi. <laughs> hey, happy Easter. Oh, happy Easter. Mm -hmm. Prior to him leaving and then even when he would come back on holidays, um, you know, the singing around the house, you know, whenever we would be doing dishes, for example, you know, his voice is so incredible and, and we would all, um, we were all in the church choir, of course. I wasn't really in the church choir, but I pretended and would, you know, just love to do the dishes only because then I could be with everybody and with Mark singing. I finally figured out the why my mom had us always singing. I f found out being a mom it's very wise because when your kids are singing in the car or singing while they're doing the dishes, they're not fighting. So on St. Patrick's Day, we would always color a lot of the food green. Mark, making the oatmeal in the morning, decided to make the oatmeal green as well. And I was the first one that had to taste it. And I told him it was horrible, it was terrible, I couldn't eat it. And he kept telling me it was just all in my head and just shut my eyes in to eat it. And I asked him to show me what he used to color it. Well, he mistakenly used model paint instead of <laughs> food dye, because at that time they were all in the same kind of little glass jars. When he was seven, he came to me and said, I think I'm going to be a priest And when I grow up. And I said, well, that's good. And so then he went away, and a week later he came back and he said, I've changed my mind. He said, I'm going to be Pope. <laughs> so. Well, just following the story through a little further, the qu answer to the question, what do I want to be when I grow up, wasn't always in the forefront of my mind. It was in the back somewhere during many times in my life. And when I went, entered high school and I discovered girls, the question became a lot more complicated for me. In terms of my vocation, I think probably as early as I asked the question about what I would like to be, 
the possibility that I might like to be a priest was in the mix. In the seminary, the question really changed in a very important way for me. I realized that I, in a certain sense, I'd been asking the wrong question. God used it, I think, but I was asking the wrong question. I was asking, what do I want to be? In the seminary, I realized that the important question was, what does God want to me, me to be? Lord, grant that as we help and assist in our various ways in this liturgy, that we might not only be focusing on our particular responsibilities, but that we might also truly be walking with you with hearts open, ready to serve you, ready to walk with you to the victory that you will share with us in, on Easter through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So we offer our gifts, and I invite our children with gifts to come forward. Thank you. Ever since the announcement of my being named an auxiliary bishop for Dallas, people have been so overwhelmingly gracious, saying so many kind things to me and about my ministry. Congratulations, and I'm really excited for you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. I'm my boy. Oh, how are you doing? <laughs> oh just wonderful. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Uh, I'm just going to miss you. We're fortunate to have someone like that in our family. I, I feel that, you know, I, I, if I had to pick a brother, I couldn't have picked a better one. But the flip side is we miss him a lot. I grew up in a very small um, town in south central Louisiana called Basile, Louisiana, uh, in a very Catholic environment, a very Catholic family. The faith of my family was very strong uh, as far back as I can remember. Uh, not only my immediate brothers and sisters, my parents had very strong faith as well as my grandparents. Strong faith existed in the family due in large part to the French culture uh, of my background. All of my relatives were uh, immigrants from what is present-day Nova Scotia when the Acadian French were asked to leave the country because of their Catholic faith and because they wouldn't swear allegiance to the British crown so they came to South Louisiana where there was already a French Catholic presence. We grew up in a family of eight children, and I'm the third from the oldest. I have an older brother and sister, and then I have, the, of course, everyone else is younger than I, one younger sister, and the others are, well, four younger brothers. Well, uh, he was uh, three or four years younger than I, and growing up, of course, I was always the big sister, you know, so I had to discipline him sometimes because Mama was... Uh, she was kind of sickly, you know, so uh, she was in and out of hospitals, and I was more or less in my day growing up. I was the older of the children, so I had to uh, see about the rest of them. We grew up kind of thinking everybody was Catholic uh, because our whole world revolved around the church, celebrating the different feast days in the church year, uh, going to Mass during the week as well as on, uh, on weekends. Um, Father Jules Spire, who died just this past January of 2010. Uh, the inspiration, really, and the reason for my vocation to the priesthood. From a very young age, maybe as young as the first or second grade, I was attracted to the manner of life that he lived as a priest. He was a very good priest. He was part of everyone's family. Uh, he was very uh, good at uh, teaching the faith to all of us and making sure that all of us understood our Catholic faith. Because of his involvement in the lives of just about everyone in our small town, from the time of being born in the world, even to the time of their leaving this world, uh, the priest was always present there uh, to apply uh, the teachings of our faith to those very important moments in our lives. He's a fine man as, as, and a wonderful priest. He uh, understands the mission 
very thoroughly of a, of a Catholic school. Uh, I think he brought with it what he'll bring to the diocese, which uh, is always the, is preaching the gospel and making sure that the school represents uh, the Catholic ch church and the Catholic faith, and that that's our our, one of our most primary roles is to teach the faith to the children. Vitus, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And now uh, the church is calling me to continue that ministry uh, in imitation of my pastor and also of Christ the Good Shepherd uh, as a bishop in the church. And while it is um, a heavy responsibility, I really embrace it as kind of a continuation of the ministry that I've been doing for the past 32 years as a priest serving in the Diocese of Dallas. I now look forward to serving in this different way uh, in helping the bishop of our diocese, Bishop Farrell, uh, in his ministry to all of the Catholics in our diocese. Well, we bid on Father Desitel's dinner not knowing that he was going to be a bishop, so we thought it was kind of neat. It was kind of a treat. It gives us a chance to get together with him to celebrate the fact that he's becoming bishop. We're going to start out with a chicken and sausage gumbo, kind of a staple in South Louisiana. This is uh, Cajun music. These are pretty big, so I think just two of these would be plenty. Okay, we put these little guys in here. This is the surest way to make sure that everything's ready. Mmm. All this in heaven too. The vocation or the call of the priesthood is to me uh, the most fulfilling vocation that one can embrace. Obviously, I've done it for the past 32 years. And that rather than what the world would have us believe many times, that it is a giving up or missing out on certain aspects of life, it is completely the opposite. The priest is involved in and participates in every aspect of life in a greater, a deeper, a more fulfilling way uh, in that he is present at all of those key moments and important times of our lives as human beings during our pilgrimage through this world in preparation for everlasting life. I think that he is a very good person for this position that he's taking. He uh, has always been a leader and able to carry out what needs to happen and and in his career in the church he's been called upon to step into difficult situations and deal with difficult problems and done it well so I'm sure he'll continue that that's the way he is. I want to thank all of my family for their patience with me. Um, one of the sacrifices that um, a priest has to make is that he is not able to be with his family at a lot of the um, celebrations that they have, uh, some of the difficulties that they have in life uh, because of his commitment to the larger family of the church. Douglas, our family is very special. And I would like to thank you for becoming a priest and giving your life up to God. We all have a different vocation and none of them are easy. If you're doing it the way God expects you to do it, it won't be easy. But with his grace and his love and our strong faith, there's nothing we can't do. And I'm proud of you. Please pray for us.